I'm Kelly Asbury. I'm here with Sony Pictures Animation, and I'm here to talk about my recently completed film, Smurfs The Lost Village, which I directed. Before I started on the film, around 2013, Sony had released two um, hybrid films, which are live action and animation combined, of this called Smurfs 1 and Smurfs 2. And those films, while the first one was very successful, the second one showed that audiences were not quite as excited about the hybrid aspect of it. Um, they were a completely different thing, tried to be very realistic and had their merits, but just didn't quite work with critics or audiences in the end. So in 2013, they asked me if I wanted to do a complete reboot of the Smurfs franchise. Um, and I said only if I could take it back to the original designs that were further back even than the television show from the 80s, back to the designs of Peo um, from 1958 Belgium. So I went back to the comic books and I looked at all of that and schooled myself on it. And I realized there was a world that's never really been portrayed on film quite to that level that really looked like Peo's amazing world that he created. Um, and they agreed and they, uh, we started doing some tests and we came up with a look for the movie that was brand new and I think, um, I think we were able to capture that spirit of that Peo work. So it was great. I was in constant contact with Veronique Colifort, who is the daughter of Peo and actually was the original inspiration for Smurfette when she was a child. Um, they were thrilled that we were going from the less realistic Smurfs and trying to be more in, in line with what her father created. So we had a lot of cooperation from them and they were very enthusiastic about it. Um, and then the script that we had at that time had been written originally for a part three of the live action films. And the idea was to adapt that story into a fully animated story. Um, we tried for a while, it just didn't quite work. Um, Veronique, again, um, the, everyone, everyone involved realized this just wasn't gonna work as easily as everyone might have thought. So about two years or maybe a year and a half into developing the story, we realized we need to change our complete take. So we went back to the drawing board and started over. So the movie really is a completely original story, more influenced by Peo than the other story we had. So it's, uh, it's a completely new and different uh, way of showing the Smurfs, yet it still harkens back to the oldest way. So it's sort of everything old is new again with this movie. Well, there are certain things that I think audiences, particularly fans of the Smurfs, and there are lots of Smurf fans worldwide, there are certain things they do expect and want. Um, all the Smurfs to be named after their personality or their vocation. Um, Papa Smurf to be the leader of the group. Smurfette to be the only girl in Smurf Village and the backstory with her being created by Gargamel originally and then Papa sort of changing her into a good Smurf and adopting her into the family, if you will. Those were all things we had to follow. And we wanted, you know, we wanted to make sure that we didn't do anything that the, the owners of the Smurfs, Lafigue or Veronique Culliford, did not like. There are certain things that they really go by that, that Peo himself made rules that we followed. Smurfs can only eat Smurf berries. Um, you can't ever see the top of a Smurf's head with his hat off. No one knows what's under that hat. I don't even know what's under that hat. It was just all the sort of things that we made sure that we stuck with. We branched out a little bit. We modernized a few things here and there. We have a couple of surprises in the movie, but we really kept to a lot of the, the basic ideas that were developed back in those comic books. I remember as a kid, we had the old GAF Viewmasters. And I remember I had cartoon characters that had been interpreted dimensionally. Everything from Peanuts to the Flintstones to Bugs Bunny to Woody Woodpecker. And they were all done in three dimensions in these little dioramas for these Viewmasters. They were beautifully executed. And I used to want to crawl into that Viewmaster. And I said, you know what, the Smurfs, are the same kind of 2D animated or 2D character, we can do the same thing and dimensionalize that in the same way. So our inspiration and our look was largely influenced by the old Viewmaster dioramas. And the movie has that same feel to it. It's kind of an odd miniature world, 
but I think it does draw you in, and I hope the audience feels that they're sort of encompassed finally in this world that, uh, that I always wanted to be when I was a kid. Sony Pictures Animation and Sony Imageworks have always worked together in tandem. Sony Pictures Animation designs and does the pre-production of the film, and then it's executed by Sony Imageworks, which now is located in Canada, in Vancouver, Canada. Um, we approached the movie very similarly to how I've done everything. We got the story in place, we got the character designs in place, our art director and production designer and our character designers all worked together with their teams to really come up with everything we needed. The modelers and the layout people created the world in three dimensions, all in Los Angeles. A lot of monitoring of that, a lot of overseeing it. Everyone really got on board. The entire team got on board to sort of find this, this world we were creating based on Peo's work, which was always our touchstone. And then when it went to um, Vancouver, it was very, very typical pipeline for an animated feature after that. It just was a different country. It was the first time I had worked remotely as a director with animators and layout artists and really had to you know, keep an eye on things. But luckily, you know, I believe a director is only as good as the team he's got with him. And everyone really wanted this film to be something special. And I think we achieved that. And I think that uh, I owe a lot to the technical people as well as the artistic team. Uh, everyone worked together in tandem and it was a very smooth process. So the pipeline was actually, um, it, it, every movie has challenges. Our pipeline was not one of the challenges, which I was glad about. <laughs> well, I think probably the biggest challenge on this film was the decision to sort of start over um, two years away from our release date. Most animated features can take five to six years to go through the gestation period and the story development period to get it right. We went through a year and a half to two years of story development that we threw out and we started over. We only had two years. The date didn't move. So we had to redesign or, or, or come up with new environments Everything had to be sort of started over except basically the Smurf designs and Smurf Village, but there was a lot more to come. We had the Forbidden Forest, we had Gargamel's Lair, how are we gonna handle Gargamel? Um, all of those decisions were not made yet, so the challenge of this was getting it done in a quality way in the short amount of time that we had. And that's where the team and the pipeline really came forward for us. Everyone really held hands and just kind of went and did this together. Um, but those, you know, time is a major, major challenge in animated features. And uh, the more you have, the better. Uh, we didn't have that much. So it was, it was definitely an added strain on the project. Largely, that's to do with making short-term goals. Um, you, you sort of look at something every day that's different. Some little progression happens every day in some aspect of the movie. And there are short-term goals. There's getting the story up on story reels. There's preparing for screenings where you're gonna get notes. There's then going back to the drawing board and starting over and redoing and doing more screenings and revising. There's design to pay attention to. My life is never boring in that three or four years, but it is a matter of staying present. And there are times on the hardest days, you have to find those morsels of something that gets you excited and go, oh, Look at that color. Look how beautiful that blue is on that Smurf. Everything, there's always something in animation to get excited about. And that's what I try to stick to. I try to stick with today's goal. We did it, we got through it. And I hope that that enthusiasm is imparted to the team as well. Um, everyone has to work hard to keep that enthusiasm up. And it's not always easy, but um, it's not easy anywhere to keep your enthusiasm up all the time. So it might as well be an animation if you're gonna do it. You know, what a great field to be happy about, you know. It's cartoon characters. Well, you know, I, I guess I could attribute it to something to do with my parents. I don't know, I, I, I've never thought too much about it, but I'm very just, from a young age, I'm, I'm very result-oriented. I, I, um, I don't collect things. If I start collecting something, it has to come to some reason that I'm doing it. It can't just be to put it on a shelf and look at it. If I start studying a subject, I start getting into it and I wanna write a book about it or I wanna write a film about it. I don't, I don't like it to just be 
a, a collection for collecting's sake or a hobby for hobby's sake. I don't know why, it's just the way I've always been. And as a result of that, if I get an idea, it turns into a children's book and then I get it, I work to get it published. And there's something so satisfying of a, about arriving at that tangible thing you've got in your hand that something was just an idea is suddenly now manifested in something that you can give someone and, and, and give it as a gift and put it, walk through a store and see it on a bookshelf and sign it for someone. And those things are all very gratifying as a creative person. Um, I do it because I love it and I hope it makes someone else happy. That's sort of my reason. You know, I've got a few things I'm talking about, not only at Sony, but sort of other places, and I've got some things that are brewing. I'm not absolutely sure yet, but you know, as they say in Hollywood, you know, I'm between pictures. So that's, that's where I'm at right now. Um, I have a lot of hopes for the future and I just wanna keep making movies.